So not now is one of the constraints that we can express for the data in our tables. But there's many more integrity constraints that we can express. One of the primary goals of database design is to model the relevant part of the world as close as possible. And the plain definition of tables often allows for too many illegal database states. They are illegal in the sense that they are not meaningful. They are not representing a real world scenario. For instance, look at the following table. We have customers with a number, a name, a birth year, and a city. If you look at this table, you quickly find several problems. For instance, we have two customers with number three. We would like to have a constraint that expresses that different customers have different customer numbers. Also, the year is entered in different formats. We would like to have a constraint that enforces that the year is entered in a uniform format. And you can think of many more useful constraints. For instance, we might want to express that the customers are at least 18 years old. Maybe we want to express that the city is a real city that exists, and so on. So we want to express so-called integrity constraints. These are conditions that every database state has to satisfy. These integrity constraints restrict the set of possible database states. And ideally, we want that every possible state represents a real-world scenario. The integrity constraints are specified as part of the database schema. And the database management system will refuse any update, any change that leads to a state that violates one of the integrity constraints. The SQL create table statement allows to express the following constraints. We've already seen the not null constraint, which forbids certain attribute values from being null. We can express key constraints. This enforces that these attribute values appear only once in the table. So this attribute value uniquely identifies the tuple in the relation. We can express foreign key constraints. They say that a certain attribute value has to appear as a key value in another table. So we can use this to refer to tuples in another table. And we can express check constraints. These are predicates, logical formulas, for example, the age must be at least 18, and the database management system will guarantee that these predicates are satisfied at all time. SQL even allows to have inter-column check constraints, so we can have logical formulas that compare or that add multiple columns. What is not possible in check constraints is to express constraints that concern columns of multiple tables. So an instance of such a create table statement is the following. So here, for instance, we express that the ID of the product table should be a primary key. So the ID should uniquely identify the product. We explain that every product has a name and this name must not be null. So it's not nullable. And we express that the price must be a decimal number of in total 10 digits, two after the comma, and we have a check constraint that ensures that the price is greater than zero. So why do we want to express these integrity constraints? These constraints document knowledge about the valid database states. So the idea is that the remaining valid states should be meaningful in the sense that they represent a real-world scenario. Also, by restricting the set of valid database states, we introduce some protection against data input errors. For example, you cannot accidentally fill the birth year in place of the age if we have a restriction that the age must be between 18 and 150. 
Also such restrictions may be used for law enforcement purposes or company standards if you for example want to ensure that every customer is at least 18. These constraints also provide some protection against inconsistencies if we store data redundantly. And finally, application programs might become simpler if they can assume that the data fulfills certain criteria.